Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Hello everyone, welcome to Draft Rig Season 6. It is I, Alex, of the Mod and DLC team, and it is my pleasure today to introduce the power rankings for Stellar League, of which I am the DLC. So just to quickly, um, before we get started, um, first of all, what is a power ranking? So for those of you who aren't familiar with what this is, this is a um, kind of tradition that we have in Draft Rig, where before, after the draft and before the matches start, we'll go through all the teams in a league and basically rank them on how well we think that coach drafted that team. Um, so this is, of course, a uh, disclaimer before we start. This is subjective and purely for fun. So there are going to be kind of a few criteria that I'm looking for when I'm ranking these teams, such as do you have good speed tiers? Do you have priority? Do you have hazards and hazard removal? Do you have wall breakers? Do you have pivots? Et cetera, et cetera. So there are, this isn't just kind of me pulling out random rankings from nowhere. There are some kind of basic criteria, but it's all for fun. This is all from my point of view. And the rankings in this video do not reflect how I feel about how well the teams are necessarily going to do or how much I like the teams in any way. So if I rank you last, that does not mean that I am praying for your downfall. It just means that based off of your team and the criteria I'm thinking about, that is where I would place it, but of course welcome you to prove me wrong. And in the past it has happened many times that the teams we put towards the bottom of power rankings did prove us wrong. So without any further ado, let's get started. So at number 14 Stellar League, we have... Light Novus of the Chien Pao and the Beatles. So, um, I'm sorry, Light Novus, I'm sorry to put you in 14th spot, but someone had to be there. And if you're looking at this team, you can probably kind of figure out why that's the case. And honestly, the main reason is because this is almost a full bug, bug monotype team. So except for Chien Pao, every Pokemon here is bug. I do really respect the commitment to the bit here. I love that you drafted according to your team name. It's really cool to see um, monotype teams to draft, but unfortunately it does make it very difficult for you to basically play on the hard mode because everyone knows you have a bug team. All the weaknesses that are associated with bug, they're now aware of and they can try and exploit it to the best of their chances to basically beat you in battle. Um, so honestly, that's kind of the main reason why this team is last. The type chart, of course, is a bit rough because it's bug mono, so there's some weaknesses that are basically shared between every Pokemon here that are going to be hard for the team to overcome, like rock types, flying types, fire types, and of course some types that this team doesn't have, um, such as grass, ground, ghost, fairy. Um, technically water is accounted for because Slither Wings Terra water here, that was a good Terra choice. Arachnid would have been great of course, but I think that was Snipes, which was unfortunate. Um, but there are some nice things that the team does have. Um, the team does have, of course, plenty of pivots with all, almost all these Pokemon learning U-turn. Has some very hard-hitting Pokemon like Volcarona, Buzzwall, Low Kick, Slitherwing, Mega Beedrill. So honestly, pretty great speed tiers as well. Lots of scary setup potential between Scizor and Volcarona. Um, Prankster on Volbeat's nice. And also, um, lots of priority here too as well, with of course Locus, Locus as mentioned, but also Slitherwing and Scizor, and even Chi and Pao. So I think this team definitely does have its strengths. Unfortunately, um, the type chart almost alone is enough for me to put it in 14th, but I'm looking forward to see how Light Novus does with this team, and I'm hoping that he does really well with it, and that he proves me wrong. Okay, so at number 13 we have another monotype team. So in Star League, we actually have two monotype teams. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting season. This time we have a water monotype team. Um, oh, and this is um, the New York Mankeys, coached by Runaway Emu. So again, honestly, one of the main reasons I'm putting this team towards the bottom is because it's a monotype team. Again, you're kind of playing draft on hard mode um, because you have a lot of shared weaknesses that are going to be hard for you to overcome. Um, of course, those being grass types and electric types in terms of offensive types, and also being able to get over bulky water types and grass types is going to be pretty difficult. But in terms of a water monotype team, I think Runaway Emo actually did a really good job of building a solid one. Um, we have, of course, this Raincore with Pelipper, Mega Swampert, um, even Floatzel. 
I think even Quillfish gets Swift Swim that he can make use of that. So that's going to be very powerful under Rain. But the team also isn't fully reliant on Rain. Um, Greninja, Empoleon, Basculin, Palkia can all function perfectly fine outside of the Rain. Uh, we have some good speed tiers plus Araquanid for speed control. We have some really hard hitting Pokemon, of course, Palkia. Um, adaptability Basculin, especially with Terra Water, hits like a truck. Um, Pretty good hazard setting and hazard removal options. Lots of flip turners, so good um, pivoting. Priority, I think, is a little bit on the weaker side here. Um, Greninja gets priority, but it's a little bit weak. Basculin does get Aqua Jet. Oh, there's, there's a number of Aqua Jets, actually, so that's not too bad. But, um, of course, we do have some very fast Pokemon, especially inside of Rain, so I don't think that'll be an issue. So I think this is a team, again, based kind of on the type chart alone. That's kind of why I ranked it at the bottom. Um, grass and water types are just going to be very difficult for the team, might be very difficult for the team to overcome. But if Runaway Emu can muscle past those and make use of his strong rain Pokemon as well as just um, Pokemon in general, I think he could do very well. So, at number 12, we have a non monotype team. This is the Kingly Decidueye coached by Nox. So, um, this is a pretty interesting team. We have um, there's kind of a few reasons kind of why I put this a little bit lower. In terms of type chart, it is a little bit better than the past teams because it's not a monotype team, but there's still quite a few types that the team is overall weak to. Um, the speed tiers aren't the best. Keldeo is the fastest at 108 speed. Um, there are, of course, some good boosting options on the team. That's one of the pretty strong suits of the team. It's very scary boosting options with Cure and Black but also with um, even like Decidueye, um, Urshifu, um, yeah, so there's, there's quite a few strong Pokemon on this team to watch out for. I do like the Sloking Galar plus Kieran Black core, I think that'll be very scary. And of course there's a Sand Slash Alola um, thrown in there for extra Slush Rush um, abusing power. So I think, um, oh and also in terms of hazards. Hazard setting could be a little bit better, but hazard removal is actually really good. Some pretty good pivoting options. Um, like I already said, very good setup options. In terms of priority, we have Urshifu, Keldeo, Decidueye. Um, so we have some pretty good priority options as well. The main weakness here is again, kind of the type chart. Um, team is kind of weak to quite a few types. It's also missing ground type, a flying type, a dark type, and a fairy type all of which I would say are pretty nice types to have on teams, especially like Ground and Fairy. Um, so those are kind of the reasons why this team is ranked here. But last season, uh, I was also the DLC for Nox, and I also put his team relatively low, and he very quickly proved me wrong by having a very strong season and making the playoffs. So I will definitely not be too surprised if that ends up being the case here. Um, one of the things I like to say is that, honestly, I think one of the most important and underrated things is that you have a team that you know how to pilot. You can have the best team on the world in paper, if you don't know how to use it, not going to help you. Okay, so number 11, we have Framos, coach of the Tinglu Fissurers. Um, so this is actually a team that I quite like. I think it's a very interesting team, and I'm really excited to see how this team does in the season, because if you look at this team a little bit, you'll kind of notice that Tailwind seems to be a pretty big component of the team. So there's quite a few Pokemon on the team that can set Tailwind, as well as Pokemon that can abuse Tailwind. Um, so of course Bramblegast, Kilowattrol, and Shiftry all gain um, all of the abilities that make them a bit stronger under Tailwind. Um, I think they can all set Tailwind. Hydreigon I think can set Tailwind. Illumise can set Tailwind. I think even Lunala can as well. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's exactly the case, but I kind of imagine that that's the kind of strategy here that Framos was going for. Um, and there's definitely strong Pokemon on the team, of course. Um, Mega Camera up to, it's like a truck. I love Mega Camera up to Lunala is an amazing S tier. It can very quickly take over game. Primarine and Corviknight, very great Pokemon. Cleaver um, hits hard with rock moves while setting up stealth rocks. Um, so in terms of hazards, that's actually very good. Um, this team has very great hazard setting as well as hazard removal. It has very great pivoting. Um, priority, I think, is a little bit on the weaker side. There's Prankster Illumise, but I think that's almost it. Um, Shiftry, Shiftry Sucker Punch, yeah, that is an option. Um, 
Setup is actually really good too. We've got some swords dancers, some nasty plotters. Um, Lunala gets really good setup options. But kind of like the main weakness is here. Um, speed tiers are a little bit awkward. Kilowattril is very fast, but then after that, High Dragon's the next fastest. Not the worst, but just a little bit of a um, kind of gap between those two. Um, type chart, a few weaknesses, but also missing um, fighting and normal types. Um, fighting type especially, I think, is pretty nice to have normal. It's good to have a ghost um, immunity, which this team doesn't have. Um, and that's a little bit rough, too, especially if you're going to draft Lunala, that four times weakness to ghost. A normal type would be really beneficial here, in my opinion. Um, so I'm wondering if this team is going to be also like too reliant on Tailwind, if that's how often that strategy is going to come, if it even does come. Um, but I think this team has very p good potential just to be really powerful, and I'm very curious to see how it does. I think it's a very interesting team. Okay, and number 10, we have Aguas Mexicanas of the Fruit Cookers. Um, so this team... I really like some of the picks on this team. Very cute team, very adorable. I'm looking forward to see Boss Baby's um, cuteness rankings. Hopefully his team ranks pretty high. But we've got some um, really nice speed tiers to start with. Jolteon's really fast. Dark Rise pretty fast as well. Um, we also have some pretty nice slow Pokemon that can make use of Trick Room. Um, priority, we have pretty good priority with Azumarill and Genesect. Um, we've got... Some good boosting options with um, Dark Rye Nasty Plot and even Latias, Calm Mind, or even like a Dragon Dance set. Um, great utility. Um, type chart's pretty good overall. There's the things that kind of. The things that um, kind of going against this team are that it's missing some important types as well, mainly Ground, Flying, and Ghost. I think those are all pretty nice types to have on a team. Um, this team is a little bit weak to um, types like Ground and Fairy, especially Ground where you don't have any Ground resistances and your only immunities are Chimeco and Latias, both of which are um, Psychic types. So I wonder if that could be like a little bit of an issue. And also just the Hazard setting and removal. I think it's actually pretty decent, but it could be a little bit better. There's two Stealth Rockers, no Spikes users. Two rapid spin users and two defog users. So actually not too bad, but um, not not the best. But I think this team is pretty solid. Um, I think it definitely has potential to do well. There's some hard hitting Pokemon on the team, great setup options, good speed tiers, um, just kind of a few missing types. Also another thing is that a lot of these Pokemon hit really hard on the special side in particular. You have kind of Azumarill as your big physical attacker, but that's kind of it. I guess Genesec can also act as a physical setup sweeper too, so maybe not a huge issue, but just something to notice. And number nine, we have the Ahead Kid, coach of the London Corbinites. Um, so this is a team, if you look at it, you'll probably see pretty quickly the Torkoal and Walking Wake. This is a Sun team, um, and of course that combo in particular is really strong. So Torkoal sets the Sun, and then Walking Wake is one of the best Sun abusers in the game in my opinion. We also have Fluttermane, Lilligant, Hisui, Sandy Shocks that can take advantage of Sun um, with Protosynthesis for two of them and then just with Chlorophyll for a little in the case of Lilligant. But I do like that he drafted a team that's not fully reliant on the Sun. Of course quite a few of these Pokemon are stronger under the Sun but these Pokemon can function perfectly fine without Sun as well. Um, pretty good speed tiers that aren't reliant on Sun which is great. Um, lots of Stealth Rock users, um, Hazard Removal, one re Rapid Spin user, two Defog users, not too bad. Could be a little bit better, but not bad. Pivoting is pretty good. Um, priority is a little bit lacking. Pinsir Mega definitely does help with the priority, um, but I think that's kind of the only priority option here. Um, but with the Sun and with all the speed on the team, that might not be an issue. Type chart's actually not too bad. Um, a few weaknesses to like ice and rock type, but could be much worse. Um, and the team has kind of most of the major types accounted for, I would say. So I think this is a, a pretty solid team. Um, I'm very, it's a sun team, it has, but it's not fully reliant on sun. It has quite a few other strong offensive options, good setup sweepers. Um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty solid team. 
I don't know if I have much else to say. I think I don't think I have any major issues with the team. I think just a lot of the other teams are also really strong. And of course, I don't think the team is fully reliant on Sun, but it's always just kind of a question of seeing it in practice. How does this team function with and without Sun? Are people going to be able to counter the Sun? Um, yeah. And number eight, we have Boss Baby, coach of the Salt Lake City Spindas. So I honestly really do like this team. Um, I think putting it eighth kind of makes it seem like I think it's a bit on the weaker side, um, kind of like for the last team, but I really don't think that. I think that just kind of speaks for how strong a lot of these other teams are. Um, and it's kind of just me being a little bit nitpicky at this point. Like if there's one or two small areas of improvement, that just might put you at eighth. Um, but that doesn't mean that I think your team is bad by any means. I think this is a very scary team. So let's start off with um, what's good about the team. Well, this team has very good um, type coverage. It has every type in the game. The type chart is um, pretty good. There's a few weaknesses to stuff like ground and flying, but honestly really not too bad. Some nice bulk on the team. Really like this bulky core of like Slowbro, Clefable, and Tinglu. We're also having some really scary offensive threats. There's lots of setup on this team that's going to be really scary to deal with between Ogre Pond Cornerstone, Blaziken, Mega Blaziken, Gengar, or even like um, like a Cosmic Power Clefable or something, or Dragon, of course, Dragon Dan Salamence. So this team is very has very nice offensive capabilities. Can very um, quickly close out a game if you let it have the chance. But of course, it also has the bulk to take up hit to soak hits and allow those offensive threats basically the chance to hit the field um one of my main honestly um kind of cons of the team is just the speed tiers they're a little bit awkward um you have two pokemon at 110 those are the fastest and that's gengar and ogre pawn and then after that we well, don't have anything faster than that you have three other things between 100 and 110 and then nothing else really so um a little bit awkward speed tiers. It would have been nice to have something that's like significantly faster. I know that's pretty difficult to draft. I always have problems with that, but I think that could be um, could have been nice. The speed boost Mega Blaziken, of course, could um, solve that issue a little bit. You just need to really get one more one turn, and then you have something that is really fast. Um, but nothing that really can hit the field and just immediately revenge kill. Um, in terms of Hazard removal too. I think hazard setting is really good. Hazard removing is a little bit awkward because you're relying on either Spinda for rapid spin or Defog from Salamence, Frozmoth, or Mega Blaziken. None of which really want to carry Defog that much. Um, especially with Salamence and Frozmoth, you kind of need to put boots on them if you want them to have hazard removal. Um, so I think kind of honestly the speed tiers and the hazard removal situation is kind of my main gripes with the team so to speak but otherwise i think it's a very powerful team so at number seven we have prince coach of the uh living legacy so um again i have this team at seven i think it's actually really strong um and the reasons i put it at seven are kind of maybe more minor nitpicks than anything else um, of course, we have Marshadow on this team. Marshadow is probably the Pokemon to watch out for this season. Very powerful, can set up, can hit really hard, very fast. Honestly, not very squishy either. Um, can steal boosts from other Pokemon. There's just a lot it can do. It's very powerful. Um, so we'll see how this um, league deals with Marshadow. Uh, I think this team is very well equipped to make use of Marshadow as the offensive threat that it really is. Um, so of course, outside of Marshadow, what else do we have? We have a bunch of other powerful Pokemon as well. I really like this um, Mega Scizor pick and this kind of like Dragon Fairy Steel Core of Raging Bolt Comfey and Mega Scizor. We have Nidoking, a great um, wall-breaking Pokemon. Moltres Galar, also a great setup. Um, Pyroar, I think, is a really underrated F-tier fire type. Um, some great pivoting options with Vika Vault and Fortress and even Samurott. Um, hazard setting, we have lots of hazard setting. Hazard moving is pretty good too as well. Um, and then priority, priority, there's a ton of priority on this team. It's actually really nice. Marshadow, of course, Ranging Bolt, Thunderclap. 
Kung Fei Triage, Mega Scissor Bullet Punch, um, Samurai Aqua Jet, and even for farther speed control, there's Webs on Vika Vault. So I think this is a really powerful team. Um, looking at it, I may be a bit tempted to thinking that maybe I should have put it a little bit higher, but I think it's very powerful. Um, I think kind of the reason that I have it ranked here is because, why do I have it ranked here? Uh, okay. I think one of my gripes was this team is a little bit weak to ground. You have no ground resistances, two immunities. Um, you're missing, missing some types. Grass type would have been nice on this team, especially for that ground resistance. Um, maybe a psychic type, I don't know. Um, and also I think it's a little bit strange to me having Mega Scissor and Fortress on both on the team since they both kind of have that same typing and also kind of not necessarily fill the same niche, but Mega Scissor can do what Fortress can do in a sense. It can't set spikes or toxic spikes, but it can remove hazards. I guess it's not that crazy to have both of them, but I was a little bit surprised at that. Um, Again, these are very like minor nitpicks. I think this team is very powerful. Looking at it again, I think I probably should have ranked it a little bit higher actually, but I put it here. I'll stick with my guns. Um, and again, I think really honestly, these last few teams are all strong, very similar um, power rank. So it was very hard to rank these teams. At number six, we have Saris, coach of the Elisa Love Club. Um, again, I think this is a really strong team. Love the Howell pick. That was a great pickup. Howell is another S tier, new S tier to watch out for this season. This is actually um, a Howell pick at um, pick eight, which was interesting. I was kind of surprised it lasted that long. Um, so the Howell is going to be really strong. Uh, speed twos are really good. You got Dragapult, which is blazingly flat, fast. Um, Miascarada is also really fast. Um, Pretty good priority between Miascarada and Hitmontop. Um, great pivoting between uh, Persian, Slowbro, Miascarada, Dragapult. Um, so there's going to be, I think, a lot of chances for these powerful Pokemon, such as Hello and Dragapult and Necrozma, to hit, hit the field and do their thing. Um, of course, great setup. Necrozma is a really strong setup Pokemon, and this is Necrozma Terra Fairy, so that's going to be really tough to deal with. Um, but of course, even like Dragapult Miascarada can set up and hit pretty hard. Um, ho -Oh can hit pretty hard off the bat with like banded Sacred Fire or even non-banded. Um, yeah, um, the one kind of weak, a few kind of weaknesses with the team. Um, there's no electric type, not crazy, but it is kind of a nice type to have, um, and also the hazard situation, there's really strong hazard setting, but the hazard removal is a bit weak. Um, in particular, there's rapid spin from Hit My Top and then defog from ho itself. Um, ho -Oh would kind of prefer to have hazards off the field at all the time, especially if you want to run any sets that aren't boots. So only having those two options for hazard removal, I think is a little bit, um, not, the, not the most ideal, but I think Cirrus can make it work. And then also, again, just kind of maybe a minor gripe, but um, there's some ground and fairy weaknesses in this team, especially with ground. You have Ho, of course, it's immunity, but your only ground resistance is Miascarada, which is not really a tanky Pokemon, doesn't really want to be taking hits. But otherwise, I think there's a lot of strong aspects to this team, like I've already said. Some very scary Pokemon, those first four picks, wow, that's, that, was, that was a team from that point on. <laughs> At number five, we have Flywinged, coach of the Phoenix Flareons. This is a really interesting team. Um, when I was looking at it in the team builder, I was actually kind of surprised because the type chart for this team is really nice. It's a beautiful type chart. Um, so congrats, Flywinged. You made a really nice type chart. There's no really glaring weaknesses type-wise to this team. There's really great speed tiers. Um, Electrode Hisui is really fast, of course. Zamazenta is pretty fast as well. Starmie. Um, and you really have Pokemon from kind of all speed tiers present in this team. Um, you have good hazard setting options, great pivoting options, good utility, good type coverage. You are missing a ghost type, which I think 
is, um, again, kind of not the most ideal. I think ghost is an important type, but other than that, you have a lot of the important types accounted for. Um, yeah, so there's some really strong aspects to this team. Um, kind of some, again, some of the weaknesses to this team might be um, hazard removal. I think it's generally good hazard removal. You have rapid spin on Starmie and a few defog options. Um, this is not too bad, like Articuno can defog. Uh, if you want to run any set that isn't boots, you would really want rocks to be off the field, but it can defog. Um, also with like Latias, if you want to run a more offensive or like setup threat, you don't really want to run defog, but it definitely can run defog. Um, and then also in terms of setup again, um, it's a little bit limited. You have Calm Mind on Latias, you have like Iron Defense Body Press on Zamazenta, as even Crocodile can make use of like a scale shot set or something, but it is a bit limited in terms of setup. Um, there's nothing that really can, there's not much that can really just set up and clean up a game on this team. And I think it's also missing kind of that little bit of like oomph it needs to also like just break through some of the bulkier teams. There's some really strong Pokemon on this team, of course, like Crocodile, Zamazenta, Heatran, even like Slacking or Guts Flareon can definitely do some damage. But there's not much on this team that really wants to like hit the field and just hit something hard. So I think that's kind of why I put at fifth. I think there's definitely a lot of strengths, but just that kind of um, lack of oomph on this team is what made me put at fifth. But it kind of, of course, is all subjective. I think Flying has a great team. I think you can definitely make use of it. Okay, so I should have said with the last one, but we're in the top five now, and it's actually number four. Um, and this is Lukai's team, the Crystallized Muse. So this team is pretty interesting. Um, we've kind of got a really interesting assortment of Pokemon here, of kind of strategies going on. Um, starting off with Speed Tier is pretty good, Tapu Koko is really fast, um, Iron Valiant of course is naturally fast and even faster under Electric Terrain, Latios, Lycan Rock Dusk, um, so a pretty fast team. Um, hazard and Hazard Removal is a bit limited, that's kind of the, the, one of the main weaknesses of this team. Your only Stealth Rock setter is Lycan Rock, and in terms of Hazard Removal you're reliant on Coco, Latios, or Emolga. Um, Emolga, again, like, if you want to run Defog in it, you probably want to run Boots. Um, Tapu Koko and Latios can definitely use Defog sets, but if you want to use a more, like, offensive set, you probably wouldn't want to have to run Defog on those. So I think that's kind of the main weakness here. Um, but in terms of uh, offensive prowess, I think that is kind of one of the major um, strong points of this team. There's some Pokemon that can hit really hard, and they can also boost to hit even harder. Um, so like Swords Dance users on this team, Nasty Plot users, um, Dragon Dance Latios is something you could do. You can also run Calm Mind Latios. Um, there's also plenty of Pokemon that hit hard right out of the gate. Of course, Chiyu probably being the, the main one to point out on this team. Chiyu is, can hit like a truck, and this team definitely has the ability to get Chiyu on the field um, to make it, to let it do its thing. Um, so yeah, it was, it was hard, kind of hard to compare these last few teams because I think they're always strong in their own ways. Um, I think this team just has a lot of offensive prowess in ways it can close out games uh, while also kind of having some bulky pivots to help get those offensive Pokemon in. Um, some pretty good variety on the team. Coco, Latios, Iron Valiant can all run like a really wide variety of sets. Um, Okay, so another thing to point out is that this team does not have a ground type, and it was also pretty weak to ground. Um, so that's um, not the most ideal thing, but again, I think this team is strong. I think this team has a lot of options, and if it, um, Lukai uses it well, I think he can definitely do well, maybe even win the league with it. I know I'm saying that for a lot of these teams, but you know, a lot of these teams are strong. Okay, number three, so we're in the top three now. I have... The Chingling's Cunning Crew of Cosmic Crusaders, coached by Nancho. So this is a very scary team. Um, I mean, you look at the first few picks, you have Roaring Moon and Great Tusk. Those are huge offensive threats um, in, Sun in, Scar no, sorry, in Scarlet and Violet. And then also followed by the Ogre Pond Hearthflame pick uh, a few rounds later. 
think that really kind of set the stage for what this team is capable is capable of doing. Um, so there's some really like hard hitting Pokemon, especially on the physical side. Um, and of those Pokemon, Roaring Moon of course gets Dragon Dance, Ogre Pond gets Swords Dance, and the Spectre pick later on gets Nasty Plot and also has a, its ability, um, Grim Nay. So there's lots of opportunities for this team to make use of its offensive Pokemon to really just push through and end the game, um, while also having Pokemon like Great Tusk, Dondozo, even like Bronzong to act as more defensive utility-based Pokemon um, to let them do their thing. I love the Great Tusk pick, um, really gives the team stealth rock setting and rapid spin that it needs. Um, speed tiers are pretty good, Spectre is really fast, Roaring Moon and Ogre Pond are also pretty fast and also have ways to boost their speed. Um, Priority is a little bit on the weak side here. Um, Pikachu does get extreme speed, but I think that might be it. And maybe Glalie gets Ice Shard. Um, but otherwise, a little bit limited. I think with the speed um, that this team has, it doesn't necessarily need it, but priority is always nice to have. Um, and then hazard removal is also kind of a major weakness of this team. Um, it actually, the only removal is Rapid Spin from Great Tusk. Of course, Great Tusk is a great hazard removal option, but that being the only one is not ideal. Um, and then just maybe another small thing, um, no flying type. Uh, I think this team's type chart is really good. Um, it doesn't, the type chart doesn't suffer too much from not having a flying type, but I feel like flying type is one of those types where there's a lot of really strong flying types. Um, it's a pretty nice type to have for the ground immunity, but also offensively as well. Um, so I'd say those are kind of the main weaknesses, the hazard removal, the lack of flying type, and the limited priority. But I think this team is very strong offensive Pokemon, especially in a setup department that I think if Nacho uses this team well, he can definitely just ignore those weaknesses and brute force his way through teams. Number two, okay. So number two we have Piswina, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, coach of Chiming Paradise. I really love this team. Um, I think there's a lot of really strong aspects to this team. I keep saying that, but you know, it's true for a lot of these teams, especially all these later teams. There's not many glaring weaknesses. I'm having to get nitpicky, but even for this team, if I get nitpicky, I think the main thing I would say is the type chart. Um, I keep using the phrase not ideal. There's a somewhat glaring ground weakness, um, weakness to rock and electric as well. But outside of that type chart, I think this team really um, has a lot going for it. Um, speed tiers are great. Iron bundles really fast, especially if you give it a booster energy. Um, great revenge killer. Tornado Therian is also really fast. Um, Persian, Garchomp, etc. Um, in terms of hard hitting Pokemon, Iron Hands can hit pretty hard right out of the gate with that massive 140 attack stat. Garchomp and Chandelure also hit pretty hard. Iron Bundle as well. Um, also some great setup options. Um, Sword Stands on Iron Hands and Garchomp. Mikirin is well, very well known for its ability to set up with Calm Mind, Iron Defense, um, Autotomize, you name it. Um, even Tornadus gets Nasty Plot, which I've used in the past. It's a, it's a really strong option. Um, and also team also, of course, has some bulky pivots that really enable these offensive Pokemon um, the option, give them the option to shine. Um, Alamomola, the fish, I think it's been drafted in almost every league, but for a good reason. It's a great value at C tier. Very bulky, huge HP, can pass giant wish stats, or wishes, um, Flip Turn, Regenerator, it's a Pokemon. Um, we actually have Triple Regenerator on this team, of course, t with, um, with Alamomola, Tangela, and Tornadus Therian. Um, Tornadus Therian gets U-Turn, it's a nice um, Regenerator pivot as well. Um, Zatu gets Magic Bounce for dealing with hazards. I'd say the main weakness of this team is kind of the hazards department, that and the kind of type chart. Um, Hazard setting is limited to Stealth Rocks from Garchomp and Spikes from Garchomp and Magirna. And then Removal is limited to Zatu and Tornadus. Um, I mean, I think Tornadus is a good defogger. It's, you kind of have to put boots on it, but it is a good defogger. 
but just being limited to those two flying types is a little bit rough. Um, kind of like I said before, if you want to spend any set that isn't relying on boots, um, you kind of want hazard removers that aren't flying types. But I, anyways, I think this team definitely has the strengths to make up for these weaknesses. Um, priority uh, has Persian fake out. I think Iron Hands gets fake out too, maybe. Um, that might be kind of it in the priority department. So that's again, kind of a little bit of a weakness. But I think just on paper, the Pokemon this team's drafted, the setup potential, the really nice combo between these slower utility pivot Pokemon, as well as these um, hard hitting or like wall breakers or setup sweepers, I think was really smart um, drafting on Pisuino's part. And I think this team is definitely going to do well this season. So with Without further ado, rank number one of power rankings for Season 6 Stellar League is the New Orleans Chandelure, coached by Tosenda. So maybe I'm a little bit biased here because two of the Pokemon on this team are Pokemon I drafted on my own team, but I think this team is great. I think there's really not too much I can nitpick about this team. Maybe the type chart a little bit, but I think this team is just kind of covers all the bases, almost all the bases that it needs to cover. Um, and I think with good playing from Tessenda, I'm this team will do really well. So first to start off with, speed tiers. Um, the fastest is Rob Robombi at 124. Um, that is pretty fast, but Robombi also gets sticky webs, of course, so the speed doesn't matter. Um, so it, it gives better speed control as well. Something even faster could have been nice, but I think speed is accounted for with that. Um, offensive potential, I mean, just look at this team, we've got Ogre Pond, Victini, Kiram White, Jesus, that thing hits like a truck, um, even Absol hits pretty hard with its Mega Evolution, and also plenty of boosting options, Ogre Pond gets Sword Stance, um, Gliscor can run some boost, can run some setup options, Rabombi gets Quiver Dance, Toxicroak Sword Stance, Absol Mega gets Sword Stance, so there's plenty of offensive threats just hitting really hard out of the gate as well as with setup. And there's also some really great pivoting options from Gliscor, Komala, Ampharos, um, that really give this, even Gliscor of course with U-Turn, that really give this team um, the chance to make use of these offensive Pokemon. So I think that's kind of one of the things I really look for in draft is, do you have these offensive Pokemon and do you have the team to like, lift up and use these offensive Pokemon. I think this team definitely does. I think a lot of these teams do, but this is kind of maybe where I've seen it the most, just looking at the team. Um, and a few other things, I think Hazard control is really good on this team. A number of Stealth Rocks and Spike Centers, Spike Setters, Toxic Spikes, Sticky Webs, so all the Hazards accounted for um, across multiple Pokemon. Hazard removal, a bit limited to Kamala, um, Rabombi, and Gliscor, but honestly not that bad. Great pivoting. Um, priority is pretty good here. You have Sucker Punch from Toxicroak and Mega Absol. Um, I think you've actually come all like Sucker Punch as well. Um, setup sweepers, like I said, plenty of them. Wall breakers, plenty of them. Kiram White probably being the wall breaker of all time. That thing is crazy. Um, I have it on my own team as well, so we'll see how it does. Um, type chart. A little bit to be desired. Um, I mean, I say that, but it's just like some minor fighting and ground weaknesses are the most noticeable, as well as the lack of a ghost type. Um, that is kind of not the most ideal type to be missing, but it could be much worse. Um, got utility on this team. Yeah, I think basically by all the criteria I was mainly focusing on, I think this team really kind of embodied what I was looking for in a draft team. And again, this is all subjective, so what I'm looking for in a draft team might not be what you're looking for in a draft team, that's totally fine. But based off of my um, basic criteria and how strong I think a team could be, this is really the team that stood out to me and why I put it at number one. So congratulations to Senda. You now have the curse of number one power rankings to deal with this season. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, okay, yeah. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for watching these Stella League power rankings. Again, I think all the teams in this league are really strong in their own ways. Um, it was really hard to rank a lot of these, especially towards the end, because these teams all have, you know, 
these people know what they're doing when it comes to drafting teams, and that really shows in these teams. Um, I really had to nitpick a lot. Um, even the monotype teams, I think, have you know strong aspects to them that can definitely um, help these teams do well if the coaches know how to use them. So really, no one's out in this league. No one is, you know, I think everyone has the chance to really do well. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching the matches. I think they'll be very fast-paced, very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Um, see you next time on, I don't know, see you next time at some point, I'm sure.